we learned in a previous video about two different types of compounds, molecular and ionic. In this video, we'll compare and contrast these two types of compounds. Let's review quickly. What type of elements make up a binary ionic compound? Binary ionic compounds are made up of a metal and a nonmetal, specifically a metal cation and a nonmetal anion. That means an ionic compound is made up of ions with opposite charges. Therefore, the force that holds ionic compounds together is the Coulombic attraction, the attraction between opposedly charged objects. The negative charges of the anions attract the positive charges of the cations, and vice versa. Molecular compounds, on the other hand, have a different composition. What type of elements make up a molecular compound? Molecular compounds are comprised only of nonmetal elements. That means they don't have any cations or anions. Instead, these compounds have something else that holds the atoms and the compounds together. Molecular compounds are held together by covalent bonds, or sigma bonds. Sigma bonds are the result of electron waves that are bigger than a single atom. They encompass multiple nuclei. Let's look carefully at the atomic level view of these different types of compounds. Let's start with lithium bromide. What type of interaction is present in lithium bromide? Lithium is a metal and bromine is a nonmetal, so lithium bromide is an ionic compound. Therefore, it's held together by Coulombic attraction. Why would the attraction stop with a single Li plus Br minus pair? In fact, it doesn't. Each ion attracts other ions of the opposite charge. So in the end, what we get is a big lattice of ions, and the ratio of cations to anions depends on the charges of each. Remember, ionic compounds are neutral, so the charges of the cations have to cancel out the charges of the anions. What is the ratio of cations to anions in sodium chloride? Sodium cations have a positive one charge, while chloride anions have a negative one charge, so the ratio of cations to anions in sodium chloride is one to one. Therefore, the sodium chloride lattice will look something like this. The positive charge of one cation attracts multiple anions around it, and vice versa, so ionic compounds are big and solid at room temperature. Think about it, you have probably never seen liquid salt. Molecular compounds do not make lattices. Molecular compounds, as the name implies, are organized in molecules, groups of atoms held together by sigma bonding. Look at the difference between LIBR and HBR. Notice that each atom in LIBR has its own electron cloud. Some are cations and some are anions, but each nucleus is surrounded by its own electron cloud. It's the attractive force between the charges that holds them together. That's not the case for HBR. What holds an HBR molecule together? Hydrogen and bromine are both nonmetals, and neither formed an ion to make molecular HBR. What holds HBR together is there's a sigma electron cloud, a covalent bond, that extends the full length of the molecule. Molecular compounds can vary in size from very small, like H2, to extremely big, like the DNA molecules inside our cells. The size of a molecule depends on the number and the size of the atoms that comprise it. Small molecules like H2, O2, N2, or CO2, for example, are gases at room temperature. Big molecules are solid or liquid at room temperature. The properties we've just learned about molecular and ionic compounds have implications on how they behave when dissolved in water. The molecules that make up molecular compounds, when dissolved in water, stay intact. That is, they do not dissociate. However, when ionic compounds are dissolved in water, the ions dissociate from each other and become surrounded by water molecules. Therefore, ionic compounds only exist in water as aqueous ions. Let's try a few examples. What is the product or products of the dissolution of Cl2 in water? Cl2 is made up of two nonmetals, so it's a molecular compound. Therefore, it does not dissociate in water. When dissolved in water, Cl2 makes aqueous Cl2. Though for the sake of transparency, Cl2 is not very soluble in water. Let's try another one. What is the product or products of the dissolution of magnesium iodide in water? Magnesium is a metal, and iodine is a nonmetal. So magnesium iodide is an ionic compound. That means the anions and cations will dissociate from each other when dissolved in water. So our products are aqueous magnesium cations and aqueous iodide anions. Last one. What is the product or products of the dissolution of HCl in water? HCl is made up of two nonmetals, so it's a molecular compound. 
there are no ions in HCl. Therefore, it does not dissociate in water. When dissolved in water, HCl makes aqueous HCl. That said, HCl is a very strong acid, which means that after dissolving in the water, the HCl molecules will react with water to make chloride and a new species called hydronium. But that's a whole different topic for another video.